Isn't it offensive to say to people, listen, you may be a genius. You have a colossal intellect. You, if you fall out of bed, you invent something. But do you know right in the center of you, you're dead. Because you have no living relationship with God. Now there are two kinds of people in the world, only two kinds, not black and white, not rich and poor. There are those who are dead in sin and there are those who are dead to sin. If I say most people are half saved, will you know what I mean? I mean this, you go to the cross, but you never get on the cross. You go and get your sins forgiven and feel happy, and you go do the same lousy thing again the next day. Come on, what kind of a salvation is that? You see, the miracle of the new birth is this, that when a man is really born, when he gets this life, he doesn't want that life. Oh, I don't think anybody gives it better than Paul to wind this up writing to the Colossians he says if ye then be risen with Christ or as the literal translation is if you've been raised with Christ you seek those things which were about you say to people are you saved they say well I don't really know oh supposing you're carrying a hundred pound sack on your back and you're struggling up a hill and your knees are going down and somebody whips the sack off your back and you get to the top of the hill without the sack and the man says, hey, have you lost your sack? You say, I don't really know. I kind of figured he'd know when somebody took a hundred pounds off his back. And by the same token, a man knows because the miracle of birth, the birth isn't some intellectual somersault. Jesus says it is this that we're dead in trespasses and in sin and he brings us to life so now we love the things we didn't like and we hate the things we used to love okay so Paul says if you are risen with Christ or you've been raised with Christ seek those things which are above which were where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God set your affection on things above not things on them come on come on come on you fellas now okay you're saved and yet I guess you talk more about baseball than you talk about Jesus, is that right? Hmm? Set your affection on things which are above, not things on beneath, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Can you think of anything more wonderful than that? Here is your life. It's hid in Christ, and it's hid in God. What are you going to do? Sneak out and drink a bit of the world's junk? Do you know how you need entertainment? Or any of us, you only need entertainment when you've lost the joy of the Lord. And when we've no joy, we need entertainment. And when we've entertainment, we, we, we've no joy. That went over like a lead balloon, but that's true. You're dead and your life is hid with Christ. Now he says if you're risen with him, that deals with the past. You're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Not when I die, but even now on this earth, I bid the world goodbye. Not tearfully, but cheerfully. All of its pleasures, its pomp and its pride. Paul puts it best as he usually does when he talks in Galatians 5 and he says from henceforth let nobody trouble me I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Weymouth translates that I bear in Weymouth Moffat translates it I bear in my body the branding they know a lot about branding around here you might get seasoned cattle branding and when Paul wrote this a man who was a slave could run away from his his wicked master, his cruel master that nearly took the skin off his back every day. That demanded a full day's work and hardly gave him enough food to last an hour. This man gets away. The first thing he does, he flees to a temple and there were priests always awake. At least they were always there, maybe not always awake. And the altar fires were burning. And the man runs in breathlessly and wakes us, a priest and says, Brand me, brand me in the name of which God and there's different irons for branding and the man puts his hand out and closes his eyes and the, the branding irons put on his flesh and it sizzles 
and he yells, and then if he's a, a garment, he, he's stamped in the back of his neck, uh, and then he lifts his foot up and he's stamped in his instep. And they rub a kind of ointment and leave him there for days until he's able to get out. He goes out, and as he goes down the street, his old master sees him and says to his friend Marcus, there's Aristarchus, go bring him back here. Aristarchus comes up and his master says, listen, I'm going to take you back and whip you like you've never been whipped before. You're going to carry loads you've never greet you. And he starts telling him what he'll do, and he says, just a minute, sir, what do you mean? He says, look, oh, look. Look, there. And the old master says, I've got no claim on you. I've got no claim on you. You're the possession of a God. And Paul says, listen, I got branded there at the base of my head because all my thinking is going to be about Jesus this man being you which was in Christ Jesus do you think he went to the uh, Olympic Games because they had them in his day do you think he fooled around with the material things of the day his head was branded his hands his feet so a hymn writer says let my hands perform his bidding let my feet run in his ways. Let my eyes see Jesus only. Let my lips speak forth his praise. All for Jesus, all for Jesus. All my being's ransom powers, all my thoughts and words and doings, all my days and all, all my hours. Listen, are you just a Sunday morning Christian? You live and move and have your being in Jesus Christ every waking moment of your life? Has he got your thinking? Would he be embarrassed to rap to you at some certain point in your life?